Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha Jeebs here in the Decomposer Lounge, where I, your old composer, decomposes right before you, figuratively and literally. This is a, a very first time listen of a band, I guess they're called The Omnific, and the name of the track is Wax and Wayne. This is coming off of my Patreon list. Thank you very much for supporting me over at Patreon. And uh, yesterday's uh, reaction to um, Bloody Wood, I guess the Indian folk metal, uh, sure is getting some really nice uh, comments and stuff like that. You know, I, I keep on trying to dive into deep, uh, different countries that still, you know, hold, hold, hold the flag of heavy metal and stuff and uh, find the unique blends of metal and its subgenres and then cultures that infuse some of their own instruments or style of arrangements or background vocals. Like I did that one, oh God forgive me, but I'm old so I get to forget. Um, that one band that I did I think from New Zealand that also um, uh, in its very unique ways uh, utilized um, uh, very unique harmonies that were uh, native to the culture over there. And so I love doing that. So. You know, the more eclectic and the more out there uh, as far as, you know, different ways of metal and stuff like that, please drop those comments down below. All right, guys, let's do this. You know how to support me. Cup of coffee, link for the headset. Everything is down below. This is the Omnific Wax and Wayne. All right. Okay, so apparently this is a bass duo, or it's a trio. The guy on the drums is just so crisp and so freaking tasteful. And, um, and is playing an extremely important part in this kind of production. Um, obviously, with two bass players um, uh, in this particular approach, I could see... <sighs> I could see so many different uses in composition for sounds like this. Uh, for films and stuff like that, you know, uh, if it would ever afford me the the possibility of a, if a director said, "Hey, man, can we use a lot of bass on this?" Like, oh, I got an idea. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the guys. Just incredible talent. That just doesn't even have to be said. What I love, and and if you're a fan of this music, uh, of this style of uh, composition, um, what I love is, God, the 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 insane attention and to details in the dynamics and the nuances of muted notes in between the melody that they're playing. So it's all the pop, pop, tick, 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 pop, pop, stuff that's happening. I mean, I, I think uh, unless you're a musician or a bass player, um, what's very unique about this is that both hands are working percussively as well as to, you know, make a note by pressing a finger against a straight, uh, you know, a fret and picking or slapping or whatever it is. So there's a lot of in between the notes that are happening there that you just 
with this kind of playing and with this kind of emphasis and focus on musicianship, you can't mess up. <laughs> it's like a drummer. The drummer is the one guy that just kind of can't mess up in a band because you can feel this, that, you know, kind of a vibe. Um, I, they have a little bit of synth stuff that they seem to be using, like that, that must have been their hook. Um, because I, I'm only, what, a minute and something into it. But they had that nice little pad up there uh, to kind of give us uh, that kind of, kind of sending a shot over the bow. That the, oh, here's, here's the joy part. Uh, but they're doing some really great stuff also with the harmonies. And these harmonies aren't, um, uh, harmonics, I'm sorry, aren't ringing out for long periods. So it's a very percussive uh, arrangement. And I, I, I love, love, love this. In the back of my head, I'm saying, oh, man, you know, not to take away from what they're doing, but ooh, what if there was a crunch? They're going, cool, cool, just emphasizing, <clears throat> you know, that kind of a thing. But in of itself, it stands on its own. That drummer is so like plus 20 fire damage. Uh, what an incredible job. And all the little trick uh, trip ups on, um, <clears throat> on how he played off with squaring the time up. You know, he would flip the script on stuff. Everything was in the pocket in the sense that, you know, they didn't do any tempo change. No, I don't believe so. Uh, but he was, at, he was so creative with his drumming and his technique and everything. And it looks like he's having the best time of his life in the video. Um, but such 
you know, it is such, he is such an instrumental part of this trio. I just, I'm sure it's obvious to everybody, but um, because the gentlemen playing the bass, they're both absolutely smoking and they both, with their own rhythmical value and their arrangements, are doing such unique things and stuff. And um, I, I was really, I liked how they kind of infused a little trap stuff there in the middle. They kind of did a little, maybe they did four bars of a um, kind of a lo-fi turnaround before they got back into the meat and potatoes. Um, and I also love in production the use of the ambient ethereal pads and sounds. So some of it, like I thought, well, maybe, maybe like the beginning of this and there was another section, maybe they um, reversed a file of some harmonics uh, that they were playing on the bass to get certain sounds. But then there's obvious, um, you know, you, you saw me doing this <clears throat> and that's where these really super nice, very well used in the sense to create the ambiance, not to override or, or to kind of um, uh, compete with in level wise, uh, the power of the bass and everything. But it was such a tasteful touch to do that. Now, here's the thing. Um, where I would love, now, the first time I've listened to these guys, so I don't know if they have it. I would love to see what they could do in the sense of, you know, with the trio being still very rhythmic, but doing stuff more with the ethereal and fretless basses. You know, I, I'm sure maybe they've got something like that. Could you imagine what they could do with this kind of talent? You know, this, this is where it's like push, this is like, this is like, well, let's say it's kind of like the Tim Henson stuff. You know how I always, how I feel how, his composition styles and what he's doing with Polyphia is pushing the concepts and the and, and the different possibilities of um, you know using skill uh, skill set musicianship arrangement skills and everything, but different kind of sounds and stuff. You know, of course, not everybody likes it. Of course, uh, in that in 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 that it's not the big movement, but. Um, that's why I say, boy, would I love to see what these guys do with a couple fretless basses, a couple of ethereal pads and stuff, and the very unique drum work that he does, <coughs> that the drummer does. This was great. This was gold. You know how I'm, I'm about the bass. I'm always squawking about the bass, and the sound and the tones were phenomenal. I, I you know, if I pick up my bass once in a while to lay down a couple lines, I feel like, hey, I, I hit the mark with these guys. They just said, this is just, you know. Anyhow, guys, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I've been busy doing a bunch of mixing and stuff like that. I got some stuff coming up uh, on Bandcamp. Finally, I'm listening to everybody. They say, "Can you take your background tracks and all your stuff and put it on Bandcamp?" So I'm in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm mixing that. Still not 100%, but I'm getting there. All right, guys. I talketh too long. If you're still here, please type in. I'm still here. Also, leave me a message, uh, a comment. Let me know what you thought of these guys. All right, guys. Oh, by the way, the link of the video will be down below. See ya.